Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, earth weather, seismic risk, the moon, Chandra, and the best cosmological visualizers on earth hit the local void. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star, relatively calm and quiet. Tiny bright equatorial region departing to the right, we begin to see a coronal hole at the left side and we'll analyze that momentarily. But first, the solar wind. Telemetry shows an easing back to the stream this morning. The magnetometer is regaining smaller, calm curves and the KP index slides further down in the green. Now let's take a bit closer look at that coronal hole incoming on the equator. It is transequatorial and Gong tells us it is a negative polarity opening. Tight and strong with the lone positive opening on our star coming behind it. We can also tell the present one is a southern extension, while the positive green one that comes after will be a northern extension. With blot echoes rocking and transequatorial coronal holes being the earthquake timing clock, the end of the week and into the weekend brings increased risk for high magnitude events. We'll come back to quake risk in a second. First, we're looking at tornadoes, both in Cape Cod and in Colorado. Cleanup begins today. Meanwhile, between them, the jet stream has dipped to deliver record cold marks across numerous states. FYI, this is only unexpected for those who haven't been waiting for extreme jet waviness due to lack of solar activity. Also need to mention the flooding from Bangladesh to India and Nepal. Over 600 dead in the monsoon flood so far, and the season still has a few weeks to go. We are back to quake risk. Not exactly great news for Texas here. Not only does this directly relate to injection-triggered seismicity, but the natural flavors as well. They might be rare, but the region is not immune to big shakes, which would devastate the Dallas area. Up next, we're going to the moon and will require a touch of criticism of the conclusion. The idea is that they notice water liberated from the polar regions, the craters, which they say was delivered by comets and is slowly disappearing. But there is also the solar wind genesis option, which is slow over time, but which also has time on its side. It might not be a massive deposition followed now by slow release, but instead a combination of that and constant delivery from the solar wind. Up next, let's say happy birthday to Chandra. One of the best x-ray detectors ever made has been up 20 years. My personal favorite are when they complement their observations with animations of the processes. They have provided both laughs and gasps along the way. And last but not least, folks, the Daniel Pomerade team has done it again. They did Lania K at the dipole repeller, the cosmic velocity web, and now they're diving deeper on the lacks of material, the voids. They have a full nine minute video with full explanations of literally everything you are seeing here. It is linked for you below. The colored blobs added in are the space, the empty voids, and their best mapping to date. After dissecting the large-scale structure from numerous angles, they zoom in to the local region and the local void, the black lobe. They go down to the individual galaxy level after that, and finally do bring everyone back out. And by the way, just below their video on the linked page is a 3D interactive of the model, so you can do some diving in of your own there. We've got our three infomentary movies coming up next month, so subscribe and stick around. We also expect to hit an eighth of a billion views tomorrow or Friday, and what can I say, we are constantly humbled by your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.